So what we're going to do is we're going to, I have uh, the video source clip already done. Now, this would be unlike what you guys would do because you will have multiple clips in the sequence, whereas when I drag this down, this is already a rendered video that's just, you know, a bunch of clips and I, I you know, it's in one big clip, okay? So it also is going to come with the audio that I already have and we're going to look at um, how I did that. So I'm just going to take my video and I'm just going to drag, whoops, I hate, so I'm going to click on it and I'm going to drag it down here into the sequence. So now I've got my first video in the sequence here um, and um, you can kind of see, I can you know scrub along the timeline there and, uh, and again like I said this isn't the perfect version, this isn't the fully rendered version. Um, let's turn on the sound here. Um, and, oh, I do need to check to see if I'm going to be recording sound from the applications here. Uh, yes, I am going to be doing sound from the applications. Excellent. Okay. So, if I hit the space bar here, we should be able to just play the beginning of this. Water. You turn okay. So, that's, that's where we're going. We've got a music level and we've got a voiceover. So what I'm going to do in order to, oh, now I hate that. So what we're going to do in order to, um, to show you how, how to do that is I'm going to separate my audio right now and I'm going to delete it so that we can rebuild it. So right click, I can um, expand my audio and video and I should be able to click, whoops. Now I'm going to detach the audio and delete it. <coughs> so right now, now, all I have is my, my video clips that I've got started here, okay? That's my baby boy. Um, so we just did some shots of clean water. That's uh, Lake Ontario up by Webster Park there. I thought that was a really nice, gorgeous sunset, wasn't that pretty? That was a great night to be filming. Um, and that was kind of an accident. I just packed the kids up in the car, my wife was working. I packed the kids up in the car. I'm like, oh, it looks like it's going to be a great sunset. Let's go. And I had barely five minutes to set up. And then the sun started turning. It started going golden, orange. And, and, uh, but I, I loved it because, well, of course, the video is about drilling water wells in Africa. And so this expanse of water that we have in Lake Ontario that is, is so massive, there are a lot of people in Africa who wouldn't. There's a lot of people in America who look at that and go, that's humongous right you know because you know even in minnesota where they have 10,000 lakes very few none of them are the size of ontario you know what i mean it's just a massive amount of water and it's right there on our doorstep so it was perfect so now i've got that and then if i go down here i've got this music called lake arena it's an instrumental by an artist named josh garrels okay um i found it i found him on the internet emailed him said would you like to help us out we're doing this for free I put together a rough cut of the video and I sent it to him and he, he decided that he wanted to help us out but his music is owned by a licensing company, a studio. He said, so I really can't just say you can use it, we have to work this out with the studio. We had approached a couple other artists and they wanted $1,500 a year for licensing of the music and that was actually pretty common. That was about, the, the, about what we were getting. Um, <clears throat> His studio gave it to us for less than a hundred bucks lifetime. And we can have two copies of it live on the internet at any t point in time we want. So they really did work us out a deal. So I'm very pleased. So anyway, now I'm going to drop in my music. Okay. Now this is not going to be synced as well as it was before, but we'll just drop it in. So <clears throat> what ends up happening is you can drop in the music and it kind of comes in, it kind of comes in underneath uh, a little bit and allows us to, um, uh, to see the waveforms. And this really, really, really helps, by the way. Being able to see the waveforms here, okay? That really helps because I can see where the music gets louder. Okay? And when you hear the voiceover, the voiceover was done in a professional recording studio, but the voiceover is a lot lower in volume than the music is, and that makes sense. Music usually is produced to a, a, a higher volume. But we have to dial that back because you can't hear the voiceover over the music if I don't. So 
Um, the other thing is I don't use all of the music, so um, I'm going to cut that there, and now I can bring that back like this, and I can bring it forward until it ends. And what I have is in my... Um, in my um, in the video, I have it ending on on the um, right here. We go to that's a school, a bunch of school children who got their um, who got a, a water well. We got to visit it. Was it had just been finished about two days before we got there. I didn't actually get to see the drilling of this one. The drilling because the way it works is the drilling takes a day, maybe two. Then they have to do what they call shocking it, where they're pushing all the mud out and everything and getting it ready for water and then they actually have to put the, the the pump head on there and so that takes another couple of days so it can take up to a week to to, to do a, a good well um, so I was there for the drilling of a couple of them but I didn't actually get to see them finished and this one had been finished while I was away at a different site it's kinda how that happened so I wanted this music to come in it's really loud and so I'll hear that, that last little, you know, guitar, bling, you know, I wanted that to hit as we switched from, from, I, I do a coffee shot, right? Boom. So I want that there. So that's the nice thing about having the, um, the waveforms is it allows me to easily line that up. So if I zoom in here. I could just bring this over until I see that happen. Okay, so it's a little late, so I bring it forward a little bit more. Perfect. Okay, so I've got my music kind of lined up. That's excellent. Now let's back up here. And we can now bring this all the way to the, you know, to the beginning. So for me, the ending was more important than the beginning of the music. So I selectively chose that the whole song was not going to be in there. This is running at about two minutes and eight seconds, including the black at the end with the logo. And that was really important to me to try and keep it around two minutes. Um, I, I, you know, I mean, two minutes is actually a long time for a commercial. It's a long promo. Uh, piece, so I wanted to keep it as short and as brief as possible. So the whole song's like 240 or 230. So I cut off the you know first 20 seconds or so. Um, so now let's bring in our voiceover, and the voiceover is actually going to be a little weird because the voiceover um, <clears throat> is not the same length. I cut it in the editing software. So now we bring our voiceover in, and we have it on a separate. Okay. Now I'm going to. Um, if we go to our audio, uh, we should have, there's an audio mixer. Now this is where I start to lose it a little bit on, um, audio enhancements, channel configuration. Okay, so what I can do is I've got, the, I've got these two, and this is mono, okay? And so I can set that to mono, or, I can set it to center. So if I want to do a surround sound mix, which is kind of cool, I can actually set that to center, which is kind of neat. And then this one here, I can set that to left, right, center, um, or I'll just keep it on, it should be, oh wait, I'm not clicked on it. So click here. That's set to stereo. So that's pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> And I'll, I'll show you guys how you can start to play with the surround sound in a little bit, but that helps. The mono helps setting it to center because then it equalizes it left to right. So even if you're going to end up in stereo, having it equalize left to right is good. And uh, setting it in the center is a simple way of doing that so that you know that it's not all going to come out of one speaker, which hasn't ever happened to me, but it is a potential. So now... Um, Can you hear him? Water. Okay, so there's that first water that's supposed to come in. So we got to crop that first off, slide that to where I want it. But now his voice is really, really, really low. Okay, it's not at the volume it should be. So here we go to the next one. Turn the knob. Lift the handle. And like magic. 
Okay, so we've got obvious level issues that we've got to deal with. So one of the things that you'll notice down here is if you go down to the timeline, you have this little slider. Okay, and this little slider allows you to balance the music and the vocals in a general way. So one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to take the vocal here and I'm going to pump that up. Now you have to be very careful because if you pump it up too high, digital audio will start to pop and get staticky uh, because you're amplifying it. And when you amplify anything, you not only amplify the good stuff, but you amplify any mistakes or any bad stuff. This will be especially painful for some of you if you're using cheap microphones, cheap cameras, cheap recording devices, because the, and any imperfections in the hardware become very evident when you amplify audio. Um, this voiceover was done in, in a studio with probably 20 some odd thousand dollars worth of equipment, and that's just what we were using only for the voiceover. Um, so it sounds really good when I you know, pump, it, pump it up a little bit. If you're just using your video camera, don't do that. So my tip to you is when the video camera, if you're doing a voiceover to a video camera or to a cheaper um, microphone, do that close to the person. And don't put it right in their face because when they do P's p -p or T's, t they'll spit basically air into the microphone and it will pop. So you put it just below their chin or a little bit higher up, like at eye level, pointed down towards their mouth, and you have them speak straight ahead. And then that way what will happen is that puff of air, when they do a P or a T, will go straight out, and it won't hit the microphone. <clears throat> you can also get pop filters. They're really cheap, little fabric filters. You can make your own pop filter out of, uh, I, I'm sure that, actually, you know, it probably could work, although I don't know this for sure. It'd be like an old set of stockings or something like that. A nylon, stretch, stretch it around a metal frame, you've got a pop filter. Now it's probably not full audio quality like you might buy at a store, but it probably could do in a pinch. You probably don't even need to do that, just put the video camera somewhere off to the up or down, not to the side because then it gets a little weird sometimes, but up or down and then that'll help. So then I've taken his voice over and pumped it up, I also definitely need to take the music and I need to lower it down probably about 15 to 18 decibels. So let's look at this and let's listen. Water. So that actually sounds pretty darn good. Now if I go back towards the to the end here, the music gets louder as it goes. It's, you know, and so and that's pretty no natural and normal that the music is going to build as it gets you know towards the end so how does it sound at the end Ugandan gold coffee employs local so that's actually pretty good that's actually a pretty good level right there but what I did for mine is I wanted to control it a little bit more so one of the things that we did is I or I did is that I animated the levels for the audio um, on the, the track here so I had it up a little higher at the beginning and then I animated it down. So one of the things that you can do is click on the audio and you can set your time and then up here if you notice and this is a little Apple thing um, and uh, Adobe has its own little si uh, sign you can add a keyframe. So what I can do is I can click that and say okay right now I want it at 7 and let's just see what it's going to be like water you turn the knob so that's pretty good but if we go further it's probably going to be too loud healthy okay so it is getting a little bit muddy because once the vocals come in I mean he's just singing he's going ooh, ooh but when the vocals come in it's going to get a little muddy so what I want to do is I want to bring it down and if you look here again the waveforms will help you so you can see right here, the music gets a little higher. That's where he starts singing. So that's about where we probably want it to start going down. So what I'll do is I'll put my timeline here, like that. I'm going to go over here, 
set another keyframe, and I'll slide it down probably to about 12 or 13, and then we'll go back and let's just play. You turn the knob, lift the handle, and like magic, out it flows. And you can barely hear. That's a great place for me to fade the music because it doesn't sound like I'm fading the music, and yet I am. So now it's going to continue. And notice I didn't do a real dramatic fade. I let it have time to fade out. That also helps because then people won't notice that it's getting less. But then as the music starts to come up, I'm starting to work with that. Now, I could also do the same thing with these keyframes with the vocals. So sometimes he might say a word really loud and emphatically. Other words may be a little bit less. And I have to decide, do I want to push that word up or do I want to leave it the way he did it in the voice over the inflections? But this is basically how you start to edit the audio. Um, <clears throat> now one of the things you can also do, let me see here, is you should be, let me, um, audio meters. Okay, so you can show audio meters here. And that's actually really helpful too because it's going to show you the overall <laughs> volume and you never want it to hit the top and, and show red. So let's take a look at what we got. And in Africa, who don't have access to clean water. In fact, one out of every five children who... So I'm at negative six to zero. I like to have an average closer to zero if possible. So I might try to pump my vocals up, my voiceover up a little bit, and then if that works, then bring the music up a little bit. The problem with that is, because I am keyframing the music, I have to bring the music up keyframe by keyframe, which is a kind of a pain in the butt. Um, but that's just kind of the way it works. Um, so, um, <clears throat> you know, you can do that. Now, there is a surround sound thing here and I got to remember where to go to get it. Themes, generators, titles, transitions, music and sound browser, photos browser, effects. I forget. Now, last thing before I wrap this up and let you go. One of the other things that you have uh, at your um, fingertips here are a series of audio-only filters. Now these are really cool, like for instance the EQ. Um, the EQ allows me to do a number of things. Um, it sets a voice or music setting. Some of them are, you know, they're, they're preset. L removes low frequencies. So let's say for instance you're recording somewhere and a truck goes by and you hear the rumble, okay? Well, my voice isn't as low as a rumble of a truck going by. So you can easily erase that rumble, as long as there weren't any higher pitch frequencies, by adding that filter. You can also do things like um, add space. So space is here. Small room, big room, spaceship, modest cathedral. And then these are all okay, but the space designer is really good. So if I add the space designer to his voice here, and let me, um, I'm just going to mute this. So you can also drag the keyframes, by the way. It's very, very handy. So I've muted the music now. <clears throat> um, and if I click on the audio now, I've got um, effects. Did I add the effect? I thought I did. Space design. Come on. It's thinking. Oh, there it is. OK, now I've got two of them. Ah, all right. I bet you I have three. Okay, so now I've got the space designer, and I can take the um, space designer and I can adjust it with uh, reverb. So, dies before reaching the age of five, perishes because of a water. Access water Unsolvable problem for many parts of the world, but it's a problem that we're trying to fix by you. So you can see how he's got an echo there. Now I can continue to try and play with that, or I can use one of the, um, I can use one of the others. There's um, <clears throat> a whole lot of stuff you can do. So I clicked on that, and now I've got a whole new panel, which allows me to play with it even more. Um, and you can just play the music. Using Africa's natural wealth. 
Um, Reverb. Ugandan Gold Coffee is a project by the Christian East African Equatorial Development Trust. Okay, so you've got all these different things that you can do that allow you to really change the echo, the timber. You know, probably what you would want to do more than anything else is um, go just to an EQ. Bass enhancer, less bass, um, re remove higher frequencies, um, or you can do channel EQ here, um, which is helpful. So there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of different things that you can play with to kind of help you um, design the sound to, to, to sound different. So if you wanted somebody to sound like they're in a big room, you can make them sound like they're in a big room. Um, if they are in a big room, you can try and cancel out a little bit of that. And it's not really great, but it does work. And then you can slide these things around. The last thing I'd like to show you is that um, <clears throat> the tools that you're used to using, like the razor blade and all that stuff, they work on audio just as well. So I can cut my, um, <clears throat> my audio up into little pieces and move it around. So my voiceover came in as one big track, but it wasn't necessarily um, lined up perfectly. And actually, in the ending product, I removed several sections to kind of trim for time. So I can cut this up and then delete pieces of my audio, move them around individually, just like you can with a video clip. So that's kind of nice too. It does take a little while for these previews to build. Okay, these, um, the, the, uh, um, uh, the waveforms, that's what I'm trying to think, the waveform previews to build, so be patient, but they do show up eventually and they will really help you time things because you can see the peaks uh, uh, really well. Does, does that make sense to everybody? I'm not going to worry about surround sound right now, but I'm sure you probably can find it and play with it. It's really cool, the space designer and surround sound. You can literally say, I want my stereo surround my stereo, the music, to hit the fronts most, you know, heavy, left and right, the rears a little bit, but then I want my vocals, my voiceover, to only be out of that center. And so you can eliminate the stereos from the center completely, and you can eliminate the voiceover from the stereos in the rear completely. So you can really build a very immersive sound with this, and you do it all in one program. So that's actually a really huge benefit to Final Cut Pro. It's one of the things that I really like about it the most in, in 10, um, is that you get to design your surround sound stuff inside the program. Whereas if I want to do that with Adobe Premiere, I have a little bit of the ability to do that, but usually I end up exporting the audio to a separate application that they have called um, Audition, which then has the same controls that Final Cut Pro does. It just adds an extra step. Um, but that program is more powerful in audio processing than Final Cut Pro is because it's built only for audio. So a lot of purists, myself included, would say, well, you're now editing audio. That should be a separate program, a program written just for editing audio. There's logic to that as well. Final Cut 10 certainly makes it simpler for most average people. And that's really what they're going for. Any questions about adding audio? It's as easy as importing and dragging it down. And what I love is it really does treat it just like a video clip. So you really have the ability to uh, use the same tools that you've been using on your video clips. But the new thing is keyframing the audio as well as doing those audio effects. Okay? All right. So let's get those PSAs finished.